We're going to look at learning objectives A and B together. I'm going to show you how to expand logarithms using properties of logs and how to restate them using different base values. Now this fellow right here is John Napier and he is the one that discovered and documented these special properties of logarithms that we're going to use. So look at three properties that he discovered. This one here says if you have log base B of 1 it will always equal 0. So you don't have to sit and memorize this. What you could do is let's say I asked you what is log base 3 of 1 as a numerical example. All you have to do is rewrite that log as an exponent. So when we do it, it's exponent base 3 to some power equals 1. So the question would be 3 to what power equals 1? Property of exponents, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. That's why the answer is 0. The second theorem is log base b of b will always equal 1. And what that means, what if you had log base 7 of 7? Again, you don't have to memorize the theorem. Just say you're not sure what it equals. Take it and rewrite it as an exponent. So it's log base 7. So exponent base 7 of what equals 7? That means 7 to some power equals 7. What does the answer have to be up here? It's a 1. The third one, log base b of b to the n, will always equal n. Well, one of the things you can do, here's our example, log base 5 of 5 cubed equals what? If you just set it equal to an unknown, and again rewrite it as an exponent, 5 to some power equals 5 cubed. So you can tell in this case the number has to be 3, and that's why they say it actually equals the exponent. Now we can actually piggyback off of this example one of the properties of logarithms is if there's an exponent inside of a log, that exponent here can come forward. So let me show you. That n would come forward, and so you'd have n times log base b of b. Well, from up here, we know log base b of b equals 1, so this is 1, so it'd be n times 1 equals n. Well, let's use that with our numerical example here. What I would do is this 3 would come forward, so I'm actually going to write this down here. The little 3 would come forward, so you'd have 3 times log base 5 of 5. Log base 5 of 5 is 1, 1 times 3 is our answer of 3 still. So that's just a fourth type of property. Now let's look at this uh, example down here in the corner. Who wants to evaluate log base 2 of 32? Let's just go back like we did earlier in the chapter and say it equals something, and I'm just going to rewrite it as an exponent. So 2 to some power is 32. Now you might have to think about it a little bit, but it's going to be 2 to the fifth power, so the answer here is 5. So remember, if you don't see that these properties actually apply, just always revert and take a log and write it as an exponent to see if it helps. Now here is that fourth theorem I talked about in the last slide more formally. All it says is if you have a log with an exponent, you can take the exponent and bring it forward here. Let me show you in these two examples how that theorem would work. Now this first one we can either leave as log base b of 9 or you can actually restate it with exponents. So what they're saying is, wait a second, the number 9 I know could actually be log base b of 3 squared. So if I have that, what can I do? Well this 2 would actually come forward. So this is the same as 2 times log base b of 3. <clears throat> so these two are actually equivalent statements to each other. This one here would be considered simplified. Now let's look at this next one. We have log base b of 16. Well 16 can be written as an exponent too. So log base b of 4 squared. In logarithms the exponents can come forward. So this is the same as 2 times log base b of 4. And technically, this answer here is better because it's considered simplified. Now, this theorem here is very handy, and you're going to use it quite a bit with your calculator. It's called the change of base theorem. So you have to be careful in the calculator because there's really only two log buttons. There's this log, and then there's the natural log. Remember this log button is log base 10. They just don't put a little 10 there. So that's the only time you can use the button. 
Well, what if you have to evaluate a log other than base 10 and you can't do it in your head? Well, this is the theorem we're going to use and I'll show you what it means. Uh, but let's look at this one first. This is log base 5 of 71. And if I try to figure it out, I'm going to say it equals something and I'll rewrite it. So it's going to say 5 to some power equals 71. Now if I think about it, uh, 5 squared is 25, 5 cubed is 125, so I know it's somewhere between 2 and 3. If I put a 2 in here, it's going to be too small, a 3 in here is too big. So the answer is be 2 and 3, but I can't figure it out in my head. Well, all you have to do is use your calculator. And how the base change theorem works is this. You're going to write the log of the 71 divided by the log of the actual base. Now these two logs here are the base 10 button. So all you have to do in your calculator is type log of 71 divided by the log of 5. And when you do that you will get approximately 2.649. Which makes sense because we said the exponent 2 is too small, 3 is too big, it's somewhere in between. Now be careful when you type this in, people will always struggle which one do you do first. Is 71 on the top or 5 on the bottom? The base of the logarithm is always the one that goes on the bottom. It has nothing to do with the value that this is 71 and that's 5. So always do the log of the little number on the bottom and the log of the physically larger written number on the top. Two more theorems we're going to look at. One is uh, the product theorem of logs and then the quotient theorem. Now remember logarithms are just another form of exponents. So they have the same properties. If you think about exponents, if you were to multiply b to the m times b to the n, you would add the exponents. For example, b cubed times b to the fourth, you would add these exponents, and it's b to the seventh. So multiplication in the exponent world here actually means to add. Same thing. If you have a log of two numbers that are being multiplied together, you can actually pull them apart into addition. So the log of x times y can become log of x plus the log of y. Now the quotient rule, if you look at exponents, if we have b to the m divided by b to the n, you would have subtracted the exponents. A number example, b to the fourth divided by b cubed, you would say is b to the first. So what we're seeing in exponent world is that division is the same as subtraction. So what you do here, if you have log of x divided by y, you can pull them apart and you can write log of x minus the log of y. We are going to use these two theorems quite a bit. We're either going to have one log and have to expand it out and pull it apart, or they're going to give us these multiple logs together and they're going to say condense it into one logarithm. So no again, multiply is add, so division is subtraction. So here's what they want us to do. They want us to take the log of 6 and actually expand it out so that it is comprised of log of 2's and log of 3's. And then use the fact that we know the log of 2 is 0.301 and the log of 3 is 0.477. Now yes, I can put the log of 6 in my calculator and get the answer, but you would have to show your work for this. So let me show you how this works, and this is for expanding. So the log of 6, can I restate it using 2's and 3's? Sure, I know that the number 6 is 2 times 3. So property of logarithms when you have multiplication means you can pull them apart into addition. So this is the same as log of 2 plus the log of 3. Well I know the log of 2 is this number and the log of 3 is that. Now I'm just going to directly substitute it in there and we're going to get 0 0.301 plus 0 0.477 and that's going to give us 0. 778. Now be cautious, you are going to be tested on using this concept, so do not just go to the calculator and get the answer for your homework. That's not going to help you. Okay, let's look at part B here. They want us to restate the log of 20 using 2's and 3's. So we have to think of uh, multiples or things that divide to make 20. Well, we know 2 in something would work, but I'm trying to think how to incorporate a 3. So there's actually a third thing we need to know here. If you look at this right here, this is base 10. So one of the other things we can use that they didn't tell us is that we can use log base 10 of 10. That's a special property and it equals the number 1. 
So there's really a third thing we can use. So now the question is, how can I write the number 20 using either a 2, 3's, or 10? That's easy. 20 is just 2 times 10. So let's go ahead and restate this here as the log of 20 is the same as the log of 2 times 10. Again, the only reason I can use a 10 because this is a base 10 number. Now I can just pull apart. This becomes the log of 2 plus the log of, I'm going to put little 10, base 10 there. Now if you don't recognize this theorem that this equals 1, you can always sit here and try to figure it out. Remember, just rewrite it. It would be 10 to some power equals 10. And the answer would have to be a 1. So I'm going to go on here and just put the second half as a plus 1. Now log base or log 2 we know is the number 0 0.301. Just simplify this and we have 1.301 as the answer. Now again, I can check it. I'm probably just going to type log of 20 in my calculator and make sure I'm right. But if you don't have this work on a test or a quiz, you will not get any credit for it. Okay, let's continue on with uh, using log 2 and log 3. Now it's base 10, so let's jot down that we know log base 10 of 10 is equal to 1. That'll be helpful for us too. Now we need to rewrite log of now we need to rewrite log of 12 using 2s, 3s, and potentially a 10. And I can multiply, I can divide, I can use exponents. So if you see the connection here, I'm going to write down the first thing that comes to my mind with a 3 is 4 times 3. Now the 3 looks good, but not the 4. It has to be stated with 2s. Well, what I know is that 4 is the same as, maybe I'm thinking uh, 2 times 2, and then times 3. That would work. Um, so if we did that, what we could do is we can now pull this apart and say it's the same as log of 2 plus the log of 2 plus the log of 3. And then I would just substitute in the values of 0.301 plus 0.301 plus 0.477. And when you do that, you're going to end up getting that the answer here is going to be 1.079. Now, this is not the only way to do this problem. Maybe from this point, you didn't break 4 down into 2 times 2. Maybe you said this instead. What about log of 2 squared times 3? Well, that would work. Let's pull this apart as log of 2 squared plus the log of 3. Now what I can do is this exponent here would come forward, so I would actually get 2 times the log of 2 plus the log of 3. Now to finish that off, let's just substitute in the log of 2 is 0 0.301 plus the log of 3 is 0 0.477 and this is going to equal the same answer. Notice here adding these two 0 0.301 and 0 0.301 is the same as multiplying 0 0.301 times 2. Either method is fine. Okay, let's look at letter B here the log of 30. So this one's not too bad. What we can do for 30 is how about 3 times 10. So let's just restate this as the log of 3 times 10. So that'll give us the log of 3 plus the log of 10. Again, the log of 3 is 0.477. The log of 10 is 1. So this simplifies to 1.477. Let's look at two more examples. This time they're going to switch it up a little. So we have natural log of 17 equals 2.833. Well, if it helps you, you're more than welcome to rewrite this as log base e of 17 equals that. Now, because this is base e, the one thing I do know is that log base e of e would be 1. By the way, since we normally don't write log base e of e, this is just really the same as the natural log of e equals 1. So we really have two bits of information we can use. This right here is the same thing. One's just written with log base e versus natural log. But then we also know that the natural log of e equals 1. So that could be helpful. Let's rewrite these. So for letter A, the first thing I might do, it looks like we have this exponent and it's a log. I'm going to bring that exponent forward. So that's going to be 10 times the natural log of 17. Easy enough for this. I know the natural log of 17. 
So this is 10 times 2.833, which is just going to give us 28.33 is the answer. Let's look at part B. Here we have the natural log of the fourth root of 17. Now, be careful, the fourth root is a radical. As an exponent, that is the number 1 fourth. So now it's an exponent, so I can bring that forward. So this is 1 fourth times a natural log of 17. Again, we know that natural log they gave us is 2.833. If you multiply this together, you're going to get 0 0.708. So in this case, we didn't even have to worry about the natural log of E showing up, but it's always helpful to keep in your back pocket.